Levi here with Hammer Fab. We got this 66 GMC truck that's a nice patina build. We're gonna do a big back window conversion on these trucks. That's a real popular thing that guys wanna do. Um, a lot of these trucks were small windows um, and guys really like the, the big back window. So if that's you, you can go to classicparts.com and we're gonna show you how to install their, their uh, latest product, the big back window, which is uh, mainly the inner panel that we're gonna be using. It's a really nice part and we'll show you how to modify the exterior and put the panel on the inside with very minimal disruption to the exterior paint. So let's get started on this big back window conversion. The 60 to 66 Chevrolet trucks are all pretty much the same on the outside and the inside. The difference is the small window versus the big window. Most of these trucks had a small window, but a lot of people really like the big back window because it gives you more viewing area, but it was also uh, found more on the custom cab trucks, which are a little bit more high end. So that's what we're gonna do on this. It, it's gonna make the truck more valuable in the end because that's what most people want. The outer panel here is the easiest one to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out a line all the way around here and then trace it with a marker and that'll be our cut line that will cut this outer panel. But what that'll be, do is that'll become the new pinch weld for where the, the new uh, big back window gasket installs over. So one of the first things we wanna do when we're laying out this tape for our new cut line is we just wanna, this truck is dirty, it's been laying around a while. I just wanna quickly wipe this. I don't wanna use any kind of lacquer thinners or anything on it because uh, if it's lacquer paint, it might come off. Um, so I just want to quickly get some of this dirt out of the way to ensure that that tape sticks good. So I'm using a dry rag with nothing on it. Next, we're going to use some fine line tape. Um, technically, this is just thin masking tape. Um, this is a, a pretty good quality stuff. You can get this at your local body supply store. This is half inch tape. We're going to start with a half inch pinch weld there. It may end up being slightly smaller. Like this one here is only about three eighths of an inch tall, but we're gonna leave it just a little bit bigger until we get that inner panel in there. And then once we get the two panels attached together as this one was originally, then we'll determine if we need to trim it down a little bit more. This tape is very flexible. Uh, on this tight corner here, you wanna kinda keep it straight. And then right when you get to the corner, you wanna hold it down with your finger and then stretch the outer edge of the tape and see the inner edge is starting to get some wrinkles on it and it'll conform to that corner. Like so. And then you just wanna come back and kinda of push that back down. Then you wanna stretch out a section of it and eyeball it and make sure that it's right where you want it to be. We're kinda of following that original two-tone paint line right there as a guideline. If you don't have the two-tone, you know, that's gonna be a little bit trickier, but main thing is you just want it to be right in the crux of that radius. Make sure it's pushed down real good. It's okay if that outer edge pops up and you can see this corner didn't turn out real nice, but what we can do is just kind of fake that with a pencil or with a, our marker when we do that. You just wanna make sure that you leave enough of that flange initially. We can always grind the flange back down. You just wanna make sure you leave, leave enough on there initially. Once you get your tape on there, we're gonna take a fine point Sharpie or you could use a pencil if you want. Just make sure that you don't uh, well, I guess it doesn't matter. This, this part's gonna get cut out of the way, so if you accidentally mismark it, it'll be okay. But I'm gonna use a fine point Sharpie marker. Just in case the tape comes off, we wanna have a line there. And the, what the tape does is it gives you just enough of an edge for the edge of the, the marker to follow along. And uh, this is another reason why you need to make sure that it's nice and clean, because if it's dirty, the dirt tends to kill the Sharpie marker. Okay, so right here in the corner, I'm just gonna kind of sketch this a little bit bigger than it needs to be because my tape didn't do what I wanted it to do. Like that. Don't get marker on this part of the body because we wanna preserve that. We don't want any unnecessary marks on the patina. 
Now you can take the tape off of the truck and rely only on your marker line. The next step is go to the inside of the truck and we need to remove this gasket that's right here on this pinch weld. So we've got new door gaskets coming from Classic Parts of America. So we don't have to worry about these. You can destroy these getting them off. Just don't hurt the patina. So we want to preserve as much of this as possible. It's in really good shape, so there's no need to mess it up. I've got a razor knife here and a scraper um, to help get this gasket off of here. Once we expose the pinch weld underneath, we should be able to see where the pinch welds are that held the original inner panel to this door uh, jam structure. And what we want to do is grind those out and hopefully just pop the inner structure kind of out of the way. Um, we'll have to do that down low also that uh, the inner panel is attached to the rear of the cab. So we'll grind those pinch welds out, these pinch welds out, and then we'll look at how to uh, remove the panel from the top side of the cab. This one is glued on there, so it's on there pretty good. Might fight you a little bit. We always like to see nice original paint underneath gaskets like that. Sometimes that could be a moisture barrier and a lot of times rust wants to start under stuff like that, but that looks real nice. So you just continue to cut through some of that adhesive glue from the original gasket. Don't cut yourself, obviously. Take your time. It's okay if you accidentally mess up this panel because we're cutting that out of there anyways. We're just gonna basically throw that away. We just need to cut it up to here for right now. This is the seam where the inner back panel, inner big back window panel is gonna attach. And so what we uh, wanna try and do is basically dissect this, take it apart without hurting things that we don't wanna hurt. So we don't wanna hurt this panel. So we need to be very careful with that. We're gonna remove the dome light here in a minute. And then what we'll do is we'll cut this right along here with a cutoff wheel just to get it out of the way so we can see if we can grind the welds out of the, the pinch weld uh, once this panel is removed. Now I've got the uh, gasket removed from this edge for the most part and I can sort of see where the pinch welds are or the spot welds. There's still some glue and stuff on there, so I think I'm gonna get a, a little uh, wire wheel or something to remove that excess glue so I can really see where those spot welds are. And then we'll, we'll grind each one out real carefully, and then that edge will get a pry bar or something under there and be able to chisel those spot welds away. All right, some of the tools you're gonna need for this job are a couple of different carbide grinding bits for grinding out the spot welds. This is a wire wheel for removing the glue around the pinch welds. Um, this is just a, a regular three inch uh, grinding disc with 50 grit. This is actually one of our backer pads that we sell at hammerfab.com. Um, you're gonna need a, a cutoff wheel. Um, you may or may not need this. This will come in handy. It's a little abrasive belt sander. And then we're probably gonna need this uh, little thin air hacksaw. Now you don't necessarily need every single one of these tools. You can just have one, one tool and swap out the bit if you want. I prefer to have several tools so I can just grab them and go. And then you wanna have proper ear, eye, and hand protection. Okay, we're gonna strip some of that excess glue and stuff off of that inner uh, pinch weld so that we can get access to the spot welds that we need to grind out. <laughs> See how nice it exposes those spot welds. Now we know right where to grind. So these panels are all spot welded together. Just to give you an example on this rear window here, you can see the little dots every couple of inches. Now that's where the two panels are put together and then they use an electric current that squeezes those two panels and it put where the current goes through there it bonds the two or welds the two panels together. So that's how most factory cars are made. But over here, we've got the same thing. We've got some pinch welds that we just uh, exposed by getting rid of the old glue from the weather strip. And we're gonna focus right on each one of those spot welds and only on the spot welds. And we're gonna grind them out with a carbide bit like this. So this is a, a really hard steel bit that's really sharp. Um, on an air-powered tool. 
And so what we're going to do is we want to kind of brace yourselves. Um, I mean, like I said, if you hit this, it's okay. We don't want to hit this. So we don't want to mess up the, the exterior of the, do or the, the door jam, um, but it's okay if we grind this. So um, what we're going to do is, first of all, put your hearing protection on. And then we're just going to pick one right there. grind it down about like that. Now, at this point, you can't really tell if you did enough. So what we're gonna, we don't wanna go too far though. You don't wanna burn through the outside here. So there's two layers of metal there. And our goal is to only burn through the first layer. We won't be able to tell if we did good enough yet until we do all the other ones. And then we'll start prying on those, separating those pieces of metal with a pry bar, something like this. So it's got a nice sharp edge and we can get in there and, and start cranking those apart. So let's get the rest of them ground down and then we'll see how good we did. Okay, now we're gonna see if we can start to separate those two skins. So you just kind of find a spot right there where you can get under it. And you can see this spot weld already broke. So that's what we're looking for, is for those two panels to come apart. So you can kind of bend that. Just, just make sure you don't bend this uh, door jam part. Now it's a little bit more rigid there because it's got a folded edge. So we can pry on it a little bit, but keep in mind, we still haven't separated this or the lower half. So we still need to do that. So, but you can kind of, we're gonna have to do a little bit and then grind some more and cut some more and do a little bit more. So it's kind of a tedious process, but take your time and this will turn out really nice. Boom, there it went. There we go. We got that whole side, all those spot welds are, are freed up now. Now we bent this panel a little bit, but we didn't really destroy it, you know. If you wanted to sell that panel or something, you probably could still reuse it. Um, but we're not real concerned with it in this situation. We're gonna get rid of it and put a big one in. All right, we got one side cut loose. We're just gonna do the same thing to this other side using a carbide bit on each one of the spot welds. I like using an angle grinder, mainly because it, it allows you to rest your hand on something. If you had a straight tool way out here, you can't rest on anything and you're, you're kind of all over. It's uncontrollable or less controllable. So um, the only thing you got to be careful of with the angle tool is because of the vibration, it tends to want to loosen this head. So just keep that in mind. Make sure that's real tight.
perfect. We got that side completely broke loose. Um, obviously you can tell it's holding it up up here, but we're gonna cut that. And ne next we're gonna move down to the spot welds on this bottom edge here. This panel is a structural panel that's spot welded to the outer skin. This is only one layer of metal here. This is two layers. So there again, there's spot welds right here, right here, and right there. And what we want to do is locate the spot welds just like we did before. And we're going to grind just through this first layer. It's very crucial if you want to preserve your patina that we don't grind through the cab. Now, yeah, the, granted the, cat, the bed is going to cover this area on the back anyways, but it's just one of my pet peeves when I see burn marks showing through on the outside from welding on a nice patina truck. Now you may be asking, well, how are you gonna prevent that when you weld the new one in? On this particular location, we're not gonna weld it back in. We will use some sort of panel bond to put between these two layers and glue it back on. Now panel bond is really strong. Um, it's, it's a really strong glue, basically. It's a two-part adhesive, but a lot of the OEM manufacturers use that stuff to hold body panels together. So. A lot of times it's a lot stronger than a weld. And so in this situation, it works out really well because we don't have to worry about burning through the original paint. We're gonna grind these spot welds, but I can't really see exactly where they're at. I can kind of see some of them here and there, but I don't wanna guess. I wanna, I wanna pinpoint these spot welds and do them right once the first time. So what I'm gonna do is use the wire wheel again, and we're just gonna go over that flange and expose where all of those spot welds are so we can see them real nice and clear. Now on this lower, on this panel, uh, you got to be really careful you don't pry too hard because you'll put an Audi dent in it. We don't want to dent this panel. On the, on the door jam, it was a little less likely to do that. But in this case, we want to make sure that we don't dent the panel. So if it feels like it's too hard and it's not wanting to come apart, do a little bit more grinding and it'll come right apart. There, that one popped loose. We're gonna do a little bit more right there. There's two, three, four. That, that part is completely loose. There, now that one's loose. Blah. Now that one's loose. I'm gonna move over to the other side. A little bit of rust showing through right there. So it's probably a good thing that we're replacing this panel. Now all the spot welds on the bottom are broke free. So we got the bottom free and the sides free. Now we need to make a cut across the top, but also we need to, we need to separate the inner and the outer skin right here. Otherwise it's gonna be really hard to get this out. So what we're gonna do is just take a cutoff wheel right around this edge here, just to separate those two, two panels so we can take this inner structure out. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use an air cutoff wheel. This is a real thin, it's only a 32nd of an inch thick, um, four inch abrasive cutoff wheel. And we're gonna cut that right there because these two panels, the inner and the outer, are spot welded together right here. And so we're not gonna spend the time, There's no, it's not necessary to spend the time on grinding all of these spot welds out because we're not trying to save that anyways. So it's gonna be a lot faster to just cut this right there all the way around on this inner panel just to separate the two halves.
or if you really want to get after it, you can get some serious equipment involved. Make quick work of this. See how that's separated real nice? That's what we want. It should be separated. Well, right there, there's one spot that didn't go. There we go. There's a spot over here. There we go. Now we're free all the way around. All right, next we're gonna remove the dome light. This one's in pretty good shape. I mean, it's got a little bit of pitting and stuff on the chrome, so we got a new one coming from Classic Parts of America. You can get these from them. They make them exactly like they were originally, um, even with the old timey looking lens, kind of a yellowish lens, or you can get a white lens. And we're gonna get a new chrome bezel for this. So um, if this breaks coming out, it's not a big deal. Just get you a new one over there. Um, but they're pretty, should be pretty easy to come apart. They've just got two little clips on the edge of the plastic here. You just need to squeeze the flexible plastic and that comes right out. And it should expose uh, a couple of clamps in here or uh, a couple of uh, screws in here, which this one is a little different than I'm used to seeing. Um, it looks like it's got some, some plastic tabs here. You just kind of push them out of the way and it pops right out. Now that we got that out of the way, I'm just gonna snip these wires right here and then we'll just leave the wires in there for when the new one, new panel goes in and the new dome light goes in. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this, we're gonna rough cut it with the cutoff wheel right below that flange right there. Now, the reason I wanna, I wanna be pretty careful with this, I don't wanna cut off too much initially because once we get this panel out of the way, I wanna test fit the new panel from Classic Parts. I wanna see whether or not I want to TIG weld it to that existing flange that's still spot welded to this panel and then grind it and paint it because we're gonna paint the inside of the cab. We're not gonna leave the inside rusty like this. This is a little too crusty for my uh, creature comforts. I wanna have a real nice clean atmosphere on the inside of this cab. We're gonna have air conditioning and maybe a little stereo and all that kind of stuff. So I want it to be nicer in here. So the new internal panel is, is uh, it comes with a e-coating on it anyway. So you're gonna have to paint it unless you just wanna leave it black. We'll have the inside all repainted. So if we have to do a weld seam on the inside right here, it's not the end of the world. Now you can see this panel, this out here, that's the exterior panel that we don't want to disturb. But you can see there's quite a bit of an air gap between that panel and where we're going to be cutting and welding on this. So if we TIG weld this all the way around, it's never going to get hot enough on the outside to disrupt the original paint or patina. Totally okay with doing a TIG weld right there. But I'd also like to entertain the option of cutting this out of the way and seeing if we can fit the whole panel in there with the, the new flange on it and everything. And if we can, then I wanna look into drilling those spot, or grinding those spot welds out and removing the old flange entirely. And then maybe we can panel bond the panel on that upper edge as well. Because there again, like it's on, a, it's on the interior of the truck. I think we can get a pretty good fit on it. But even if we didn't get, you know, obviously we can't get in there and clamp it together. But if the panels fit good enough together to begin with and we can just put a bunch of panel bond in there and put it in there, then this upper edge could be glued and then the lower edge will be panel bonded and then the side the sides we can still spot weld those in so i'd like to have some welds on it somewhere and so if we have to weld it anywhere in only one spot i'd rather do it on the sides so we'll we'll decide that once we get into this a little bit further all right next we're going to snip these wires on the dome light we're going to snip them real close to the connector so anytime you want, you cut the wires like that, if you need to reuse these wires, always be on the conservative side of, of where you make the cut. All right, now that we've got the dome light out of the way and the wires cut, we're gonna tuck the wires back there and we're gonna make our final cut on this inside panel. So we wanna make that cut. And like I said, it's a rough cut, okay? So we wanna cut that about a quarter of an inch on this side 
the lower side of this seam. And then we'll decide whether or not we want to reuse the, the pinch weld or use the whole new panel altogether. We're going to use the cutoff wheel again, just like we did around the outer uh, back window, to zip right across there. Now, this is crucial that you do not skip over with your cutoff wheel onto this panel. Because if you gouge that panel, then you just created more work. So you need a real steady hand and take your time. Brace yourself so that you're not just freehanding it out in the middle of the air. You want to kind of brace yourself like this and just move slowly. Whoops, guess we're getting a new lens. All right, now this inner, pa inner panel should be ready to come out. We got some rats living in there. That's where the rust started. See, that's what happens. They eat up your seat. This is seat cushion material. And then they take it in here and they think that makes a good home. So they put it right there and then moisture gets in there and it just starts to rot. Next thing you know, you got rust poking through this bottom edge. If you got a rusty uh, inside cab panel, all the more reason to get one from Classic Parts and make it a big back window. All right, now we got the inner panel out. That was the hard part. Now we just need to spend a little bit of time dialing in some of these spot welds. Um, the good news is we didn't break through the outer skin on any of these, so that's what we want. We only wanted to do the inner panel. Um, but now that you can see what's in there, you can see uh, you know, there's some surface rust and some of it's kind of crusty looking. Most of this we're gonna cut out, so we still need to cut this, uh, the rear panel, the outer panel. On our, on our marker line on the outside. So we'll do that here in a minute. Some of this other rust that's just kind of sitting on the surface there. Now's a good time to uh, scuff that off of there or bust it down with a wire wheel um, or scotch Brite or something, DA sand or something like that to get most of the rust off of there. And I think what, we're do, what we'll do before we put the new panel in, we'll put some 415 or some, some kind of a, a paint over this inside metal because actually under the rust is just bare metal. They never put any protective coating on here. Now's a good time to do that. It's also a good time while this inner panel is removed to access some of the original trim from the backside. We're gonna preserve the patina, but we also wanna preserve the original GMC trim. These trucks uh, are kind of rare. The GMCs, the, the custom cab trucks are really rare. And to my knowledge, I don't know anybody that makes the GMC cab trim. So we want to be really careful with that, removing it. But also we want to make sure that the, the patina on the trim is not disturbed because we're going to end up putting it back on later. But now's a good time to access these clips. You can squeeze them here on the inside instead of trying to pry them off from the outside. One of the next things we want to do is just kind of bust off some of this rust. And we just want to make sure that those spot welds are real nice and, and flat. A lot of times there might be an edge of them or kind of a crater that's sticking up. So we just want to bust them down flat. We're going to use our uh, Hammer Fab 3D printed backer pad. This is a three inch diameter and we're using uh, Jag 10 tools. They're on Instagram. Look up Jag 10. They have some really nice abrasives that are made in America. Um, so we've got one of their 50 grit um, quick connect uh, abrasive discs there. You might want to get a respirator for that. All right, now we're going to move back to this back panel 
and cut right on our marker line that we established earlier and remove this part of the back of the cab. Now it's real crucial that you don't mess up the patina at this point. You know, if you get, if you mess up this flange right here, that's probably okay if you scratch it or whatever, because that's going to get a gasket over it in the end anyways, but you do not want to disturb the part that's blue or, or inside that radius right there. The corners are going to be a little bit hard to do with a big cutoff wheel like this. So what we'll do is we'll cut the straight parts with the cutoff wheel and then we'll come back in the corners with a little bitty air hacksaw because it turns the corner real nice. Okay, now you want to hang on to this panel when you get ready to do that last cut, just so it doesn't wreck something. Boom, just like that, you got a big back window. Don't stop there though. You wanna make sure we get that inner panel in place. Okay, now that we got the main part of that panel rough cut out of the way, we couldn't cut these corners real tight with the hacksaw, so what we're gonna do is use a, a carbide bit and just real neatly clean that up and grind that metal right to the line. This is a flapper disc, it's an abrasive disc. This one is 60 grit. They work really well, they work on high speeds. So now we can get in there. We basically just wanna get out of the corners about that far with a, with a radius tool like this. You know, we don't wanna do all this flat area with this. It's a lot harder to do a flat a flat spot with a round wheel. We want to do the round spot with the round wheel, the flat spot with a flat disc. That's where having a flat disc comes in really handy. We've developed these uh, backer pads. They're three inch. They fit a Rolox style abrasive disc. This particular disc is from Jag 10 Tools. Um, it's a 50 grit disc and it has a little threaded nub on it and you just twist it on there and it holds it on. But our backer pads are, are really rigid they're nylon plastic and they'll fit your common air tools with a quarter inch mandrel. The nice thing about them is when you're trying to get a nice straight flange like this, they, they work really well because unlike the rubber ones that are kind of cheap, the rubber ones flex too much and conform to whatever. And so what you end up with is a really lumpy flange. We don't want a lumpy flange. We want a nice straight crisp flange. 
And so that's specifically what we developed these for. Check it out. See how nice and straight and chiseled that made that look? Man, it looks like you know what you're doing. Very little effort. You can call it good enough if you want, but the OCD in me tells me to keep going. Don't grind your ear off. Okay, now we just gotta go over that top edge. I think I'm gonna get a bigger disc on it. It, it looks pretty good, but I'm gonna hit it with this big uh, eight inch 80 grit. <laughs> All right, that's good. So now we're done trimming the outer panel. We've got it smoothed out really nice, got the corners really nice. It's pretty much like a big window cab would look at this point. So we will end up having to attach the big back window to this flange all the way around. Um, we could probably weld that without disturbing, you know, spot weld it kind of like it was originally without disturbing the original patina because we're just gonna be welding on this flange and that flange is gonna be completely underneath the new weather stripping. So as long as our heat zone doesn't burn into around this corner, we should be fine. And I think we'll be fine with the TIG. We're gonna TIG weld this. So um, the TIG, is a, the heat is a lot more controllable, especially if you have some really small holes for the plug weld instead of some giant ones. You know, we'll probably have like a 3 16 hole for our plug welds. So I think we'll be okay. That'll make a nice solid foundation for the back window. So let's test fit it and see how it fits. This part is from Classic Parts of America. They're in Kansas City, Missouri. That's my hometown. Guys, I used to go down to Classic Parts of America with my dad and we would look in their showroom at all the cool parts that they had when I was a teenager. And I dreamt of someday having a classic truck of my own. Well, I had a classic truck. It's the one that uh, we just finished, the 58 Apache um, Project Step It Up. But uh, yeah, I always dreamt of uh, getting a truck finished and using all their parts. And they've been with me along the ride this, this whole time. So I'm glad to be able to help them out and show them how to put in this big back window kit for 60 to 66 Chevy and GMC trucks. So let's see if this, uh, let's see how well this fits on our initial fit up. So really the only unknown at this point is this upper flange. So you can see on this new panel how it has kind of a Z, Z channel flange there. Well, what we did on the old one, on the original one, was we cut it right here below this corner. And so that's what's left remaining up here right now. And so the reason I left it that way is because I want the option of may possibly TIG welding it right here, butt welding it. In case y'all don't know what a butt weld is, a butt weld is when you got a piece of metal and a piece of metal and you butt them up perfectly like that, flush with one another, and you weld that seam. We're not doing a, we're not doing a lap weld. That's a lap weld. We're not doing that. That's no bueno in this situation. We're doing this, possibly. But the other way, if you're going to do a lap weld, so the other thing you do, like a spot weld, would be like where the, the two panels were like this, and that pinch weld would get welded together right there. That's how this was originally installed. And if we can put it back in that way, we'll do it that way, but we won't be able to weld it that way because once it's in there, we can't get to those welds. So 
Let's talk about that for a minute. So let's say you did want to weld this in completely. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, about the only way you can get to those uh, two flanges to spot weld it exactly like it was originally is to remove the outer roof skin. Now the outer roof skin is also available from classicparts.com. So if yours is damaged or rusty or something like that and you need to do that anyways, well then on this on the upper uh, rain gutter, that panel is spot welded to the rain gutter all the way around and so you would just drill those out the same way we did this, pop that outer panel off and then boom, you got access to this flange from the backside and you can weld this panel in at that time. We're not going to do that because we've got a good roof and it's got a really sweet patina on it. So we don't want to disturb that by grinding it out and welding and stuff. So we're going to leave the roof in there. So our only option is to figure out how to install this in here and not be able to weld that. So we're either going to butt weld it out here where we can get to it, or we're going to leave that flange on there, grind this one off, and then uh, panel bond it up there on that edge. So um, we may or may not be able to get that in here right now, but let's see. That went in there pretty good actually. Um, so it, it's not going up all the way because we still have that flange on there, but that popped in there really easy. So I think what we're gonna do is try and panel bond that bad boy in there. And what that'll allow us to do, obviously it's a lot less work welding. We don't have to weld all that. We're gonna have a little bit more work grinding out spot welds from the backside. And they're kind of hard to see, kind of hard to get to, but if we take our time, this is gonna turn out really, really nice. So I think that's what I would rather do. Because if we can leave this flange on the new panel, it leaves a lot of the structural rigidity in place that's already been stamped into the panel. And so if we cut that out of the way, it's gonna basically turn that upper edge into a floppy noodle. And that requires a lot more skill to get it back where it needs to be when you weld it. So now we are gonna use this opportunity with the, the inner panel out of the way. We're gonna gently remove these trim clips. Now these look like, uh, kind of like upholstery clips or whatever, so they're just a little spring-loaded clip. If you squeeze them like that, it should want to come out of that hole. Now, we don't want to damage this trim. This GMC trim is kind of hard to find, and the stuff that we got is in really good shape. We want to put it back on and not mess up the, the finish on the trim itself. Not only don't we want to mess up the trim, but we don't want to mess up the body. So we're going to use a plastic bone. This is called a bone or a trim removal tool, whatever. And we're going to gently, as soon as we can on the outside, slide this underneath and just gently use that to, to assist in removing this clip. Um, so I'm going to squeeze the inside with some pliers and push. And then as soon as I can get that underneath outside, I'm going to pull on it a little bit. Okay, now I'm under it. Now out here, you just apply a little bit of... Pressure it should pop right out. Yeah, you see how that fought me a little bit? Even with having access to the back side, could you imagine trying to get that off just from the outside without wrecking that little dainty piece of trim. It's aluminum, it's really soft. It would bend really easy. So I'm glad that we're able to, to get that from the backside. Now what you wanna do when you take this stuff apart, you wanna keep record of where it came from, which side of the truck it came from. And if you're in a shop with multiple vehicles, you wanna make a put a piece of tape on here so that the clips don't fall out. And then you wanna label it. We call that bagging and tagging. You wanna be real, thorough on how you label all this stuff, especially if it's hard to find stuff and you're not going to be replacing it with new stuff. So we want to be able to find this stuff real easy in the shop and know exactly how it goes back on the truck later. So I just got some uh, regular masking tape. And what I did is I just put some tape around those two clips so that they can't come out of the out of the piece of trim. And then uh, I might put another one on there too, just in case Oop. so it doesn't come loose. And now you don't want to write on the piece of trim, you want to write on the piece of tape. So you can do it however you feel like you need to do it, but um, I'm going to write on there 66 
GMC passenger cab trim, just like that. All right, so the main reason that I wanna take this trim off and put it back on later, even though we're not painting the truck, a lot of times what we'll do is give the truck like a Scotch-Brite bath, or um, some guys like to clear coat their patina, but we wanna, if we're gonna do any of that, we really don't wanna have to work around this trim. You know, we could do a lot better job if this trim was out of the way, and then give it the Scotch-Brite bath, wax it, whatever you're gonna do to the patina, and then put the trim back on. It's gonna turn out much nicer. All right, now removing this piece of custom cab trim. I love this piece of trim. I want to, uh, if I can't reuse these, I wanna find some better ones and, and, and do that. But this one is pop metal, and so pop metal rusts and corrodes and pits really bad. So I want to try and get this off though without damaging the, the badge or the cab, obviously. But it's got a different style clip than these, these were. This is more of a trim style clip where there's usually like a little female insert that goes into the body first. It snaps into the body and then the trim clip has two little prongs on it that snap into those. And so a lot of times you have to like peel them off of there. So I'm going to see if we can push them out from the inside or bang them out. Oh, there, there we go. Well, that, was, that was easy. Look at that. Easy peasy. Thing popped right out. Probably wouldn't have came off that easy if we didn't have that inner cab panel out of there. So the pins, see how they have a, they have a little sheet metal clip on the outside of the stud on the pop metal piece. So normally what you would do is put those, uh, put that piece in there first and then push the piece of trim on. And the next step is to, since we decided we're gonna go ahead and utilize the new flange on the new panel, uh, we're gonna get rid of this piece. We gotta get rid of these spot, uh, drill these spot welds out. Well, not you can drill them, but I don't even know if you can get a drill in there. But we're gonna carbide those out. But first, just like on all the other ones, we need to reveal where those spot welds are so we can see them real easy. And then we're gonna have to meticulously kind of peel this panel away from this panel. It's gonna be kind of rusty. We're gonna wire wheel it first, so make sure you have a respirator. All right, now we're gonna grind those spot welds out that are right up there. You can just barely see them in the shadows. They're exposed real nice and clear, and there's a whole bunch of them, but we got to drill, or I keep saying drill, but we got to carbide those out and then slowly peel this away without hurting this panel. All right, now if you can get a hold of this like this and kind of use it as a handle and twist it back and forth as you go, you know, don't get carried away with it and end up messing up this panel, but that'll make a real nice lever. And you should be able to work those spot welds back. If you got them ground down a little bit, they should just pop right out. What you do, you just go back and forth a little bit. And you're gonna fatigue whatever is left over and then lightly tug on it. Or you could use your wedge tool here and get, get right in there and get, gently pry on it. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more grinding. This is a nasty job, but somebody's gotta do it.
There it is. Good luck keeping that straight on the way off. Now we got, we were able to get that successfully removed with minimal damage to that upper panel. Now I say minimal, because as we were twisting that a little bit, it, it puckered that edge. You can see here, there's a couple of little twisties there. Not real bad. It didn't mess up the outer skin. It just messed up that flange a little bit. So we're gonna try and straighten out that pinch weld flange that we just broke the spot welds loose on. It's kind of hard to get to. So I'm gonna use these 90 degree needle nose pliers just to kind of grab it and twist it a little bit. It's not gonna make it perfectly flat, but it, we just wanna get it a little bit flatter so that we have a nice surface to for the panel bond to adhere to. We're just kind of grabbing it and twisting it. There, that's pretty good. Next, we're gonna use our trusty backer pad again. You can get these at hammerfab.com. They're 3D printed. They keep your disc nice and flat. We're using some 50 grit from Jag 10 Tools. You can find them on Instagram. They got some great stuff. We use it all the time. Now we're gonna clean those spot welds nice and flat on that flange. And it just so happens that this grinder with our backer pad fits in there perfect. So that's what you need. All right, so now we ground that flange. We're just gonna hit it one last time with a wire wheel to get most of the rest of that rust off of there. Let's test fit this big back window uh, inner panel one more time. Now that we've got that flange out of the way, it should go right in there. So you wanna get the upper corners in first. Thing snaps right in there. Just about. Thing fits awesome and we can even get a clamp right here through the dome light and hold that in real nice so remember we left the outer panel a little bit big and that's why because we want to make sure that the inner that the, that we can grind to this inner panel and make them flush so we're still good in that regard we just want to make sure that this is seated in there real nice and snug I'm just going to throw a couple of clamps on here so we can stand back and look at it we're just putting a few clamps around this outer edge. Um, we've got some C clamps down here. They hold it real nice and tight. Once you get them kind of snug, you can kind of tap it into place and make sure it's seated all the way and then snug the clamps down. Now this does fit nice enough around the edge here where you could panel bond this if you want. I think we're gonna go ahead and put some spot welds here. We're gonna panel bond the top all the way around and then we're gonna panel bond down here and then we're gonna spot weld around the window. So we'll have a combination of welding and panel bond. But right now we're just doing the initial fit up. The panel fits in there really nice. So you wanna make sure that these two panels here, see how they, they're both kind of flimsy right now and they can slip in, uh, in relation to one another. You just wanna make sure that you get those clamped in the right spot once you get your panel bond in there because once it sets up, you can't undo it. We'll, we'll be able to get at least one vice grip right here in the middle to hold it. Uh, in relation to one another where they need to be. So probably something like this, or we might, might, do, a, might do a C clamp in there. 
because we can grab that back of that flange with a C-clamp and then control the flushness of those panels. The top of the window looks pretty good. Now the bottom here looks like it's a little bit, looks a little high in the middle, but really what it is is this outer panel, once we separated it, it bowed out a little bit. And so you gotta bring that back in, you gotta bring those two panels back together and clamp them like that. So I just wanna double check and make sure that nothing's bent or anything weird. We should end up with about the same amount of metal showing all the way around. We got a little bit more in this corner, but that's okay. We got a little bit more over there, but that's okay. What we don't wanna do is we don't wanna grind too much of the outer flange away. I would rather have more of the outer flange and less of the inner flange there. So what we may do instead on this, on this window flange is leave the outer the way we have it and not trim it down. And then just, um, I guess you'd call it spot weld the inside. Instead of drilling holes and plug welding it, we'll just like basically just spot weld it from this flange to that flange. Kind of a, kind of a lap weld right there on the inside. And that way that gives us the option still. We don't want to have, we don't want to have not enough flange there because that will drastically affect the way the rear window goes in. Okay, now that we've got the inner panel from Classic Parts of America clamped into place, we're doing the final test fit on this, and it's fitting really good, guys. There's no sense in buying a $400 junk old truck cab so that you can try and dissect this off of it and put it into a small window cab. There's no sense in trying to make one of these panels. I myself entertain doing that. I'm a metal shaper by trade. Um, I could make this panel if I wanted to from scratch, but what's the point? Just buy one from Classic Parts, it's ready to go, it fits really nice, and we're putting one in this truck right here. So, the next step to this installation is, I just want to make some witness marks along this bottom edge with a Sharpie marker. And we're going to pull this panel out one more time, and I'm going to grind that metal to bare metal just above that marker line so that our panel bond sticks really good right there. We don't want any rust or paint under there. This uh, big back window panel is almost ready for final installation. There's a couple of more steps we need to do and one of them is we need to prep the back side of the new panel um, in certain areas for welding and for panel bonding. So what I'm going to use is uh, angle grinder with our three inch backer pad on it in conjunction with a uh, coarse Scotch-Brite disc. This one uh, particularly is from Jag 10 Tools. Um, it's not going to hurt the metal, but it'll remove the paint. So it's kind of like a strip it disc. Um, it just twists, locks onto our disc just like that, and it's nice and flat. So because we're going to be TIG welding this flange, we want to get all of that powder coating off of there. Uh, or e-coat, whatever it is. We want to get it off of there because it doesn't TIG weld really nice. <clears throat> so we're going to grind it off, but then we're going to put a little bit of weld through primer on there. We want something on the metal to keep it from rusting in between the two layers. But weld through primer, TIG welds a lot better than um, this e-coat. One thing I forgot to do. Uh... Ah, we can use the old one as a pattern, okay? Sometimes you forget, you mess things up, you improvise, okay? So what we're gonna do is, I only wanna grind certain spots of this down to bare metal. I don't wanna grind the whole flange down to bare metal because only certain spots contact the ribs that were on the back of the cab. Um, I should have made some witness marks on here and transferred them to this side so that I knew right where to grind. So I didn't do that. I don't wanna put it all back in there again. So I'm gonna use the old panel lay it on top of this one and transfer where the old spot welds are and that'll tell me where to grind. Now I can basically just transfer visually right where I want those pieces of the back, uh, back panel to be bare metal. The rest of it, we wanna leave some paint on there because there's no sense in just making it rust. All right, now we're done with this panel. 
And now we're gonna grind this flange right here down to bare metal because that's also gonna get panel bond on it. Mainly just the flat surface there. We don't really need to grind this upper flange. Yeah. Yeah, we don't really need to grind that upper flange. On these flanges that we're going to use panel bond on, the type of panel bond that we're going to use uh, specifies that it has to be metal to metal contact. So we're not going to use any kind of etch primer or weld through primer or anything on this bare metal. But it does need to be bare metal, not rusty metal. So it needs to be real nice and clean. And then once we put the, the panel bond in between there, it basically acts as a barrier between the metal and the atmosphere just like paint would. So it has to be metal to metal and it has to be really clean. Okay, we got that, we got that, we got the back side of that. Uh, now we just need to do this. Um, <clears throat> so we don't need to necessarily do the whole thing, but it might just be easier to do the whole thing. Really, we just need the very edge of this. Ground down. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over again. We're going to do the back side. This flange will also be TIG welded. We're just going to do some real small TIG, uh, basically same thing as a spot weld, um, lapping this panel onto the other panel. But we want to make sure we get some of the paint off of the inside and the outside because the TIG welding doesn't like any sort of contamination and it considers that paint contamination. So we just want to clean that edge up just a little bit all the way around. Now there was a, a couple of little puckers on this flange here, um, probably from shipping or something. So I'm just going to straighten them out real quick with a hammer and dolly. We want that surface to be nice and flat when we install this panel. Seems like I saw something somewhere else too. Oh, here's one. There's a little one right there.
Okay, we're gonna clean the inside of the big back window cab. Um, now that we've got the rust stripped off of there, uh, we got most of it stripped off. We got the loose stuff knocked off. So now we're gonna use some Pour 15, which is, that's how it's designed to be used. Um, over not crusty rust and not necessarily bare, clean, perfect metal but um, knocking the loose rust off as best you can with a wire wheel and then coat it with some, some of this pour 15 and that'll preserve the inside of the cab and prevent it from further rust. So the, first we're gonna just clean it with some paint thinner, um, with some rags, make sure you got some gloves on. Um, we're gonna do that a couple of times and then we'll start painting it and we'll let that set overnight. And then tomorrow we'll install the, the uh, big back window panel that we've been prepping and fitting. I'm glad I did all this though. I'm glad we went this extra step and cleaned this off. So this will really make me feel better about the truck in general, just the way it's going back together. Okay, now what you wanna do is you wanna prevent the paint from potentially dripping onto the exterior of the body, exterior of the body. So I'm just gonna do some masking tape around this edge and I'm only gonna put the tape on the surface that's gonna get covered with the pinch weld. So right there on that white, we're gonna put tape, and that way we can, it gives us a little bit of a fence, if you will, to keep that paint from dripping on the exterior of the body. We don't need to go crazy on masking everything. I mean, unless you're gonna spray it. We're not gonna spray it though. So we're just gonna brush it on, but you can spray this stuff. Um, it works really well. Just make sure you got, if you're gonna spray it, you gotta have everything covered because this stuff, if it gets on your skin or anything, it doesn't come off. So I'm gonna mask off these areas down here where we want pour, or where we want uh, panel bond, but not the pour 15. So I'm just gonna put a piece of tape over those bare metal areas. So again, what I'm doing here is to mask off the bare metal so that we can later put a uh, panel bond there. And right now we want to prevent the pour 15 from touching that bare metal. All right, now that we've got uh, certain areas masked off, um, we're ready to start applying some pour 15 on this inner cab panel. I'm gonna start in the hard to reach areas first. That way I'm not reaching over them later. I'm not reaching over wet paint to get to those areas. So you kinda wanna start back in the furthest corner and work your way out. So same thing down here. We'll get to the hard to reach areas, all through here, all the way up in there, all the way around on that side. And then we'll focus on getting these areas that are easy to get last. And remember, this stuff is very potent. And what I mean by that is like, um, it will stain anything so don't get it on your clothes or if you do get it on your clothes don't don't get it on your nice clothes um, don't get it on your skin because it takes weeks to come off and a little bit goes a long ways this will really help preserve the truck for years to come you want to try not to flick the bristles on the brush because it'll fling that stuff everywhere and Next thing you know, you'll have black polka dots everywhere. I do feel like Bob Ross now. You know, maybe we need a, a happy little friend over here. And, you know, if you mess up, it's just a happy mistake. You know, you just keep going, you paint over it, and it's good. You're good. Oh, one of the areas I forgot. Oh, those trim holes. Uh, we don't want, you don't want to paint so much over there that it ends up squishing a run out on the outside of your patina. I did not mask those up. I'm just gonna be really careful around those holes right now and make sure I don't get excess paint squishing out of those holes. So I'm just gonna kinda dab around those holes to make sure I, that doesn't happen. And then just make note, don't, don't brush over those holes um, unless you got them masked up on the outside. That would not be a happy mistake. That would be bad.
So you guys might be kind of wondering about how much time does it take to do this big back window conversion? Um, well, so far this is still day one. Um, we've been at it now for probably about nine hours or so, maybe eight hours. And then, we're, you know, doing the filming and stuff takes up some time and doing different cuts like that. So I'd say we got a solid six hours of just work so far. And we're really close to, we got most of the hard work done. We got a little bit left to do tomorrow, but uh, really first thing we should be starting to uh, panel bond and, and get the window clamped in place. And then uh, it's gonna, the, the TIG welding part of it's gonna take a little bit of time, but I think we might have I don't know, two, two or three hours left of actual work tomorrow. And then, so maybe nine hours total to do this big back window, something like that. If you were really busting your tail, you could probably get it done in nine hours if you had everything ready to go. And So basically in one day, if you had the parts, the supplies, the, the shop to do it, and a little bit of uh, know-how from watching this video. You could probably do this in one day, you know, maybe two days. Still, that's a weekend. You can do this in a weekend. Or if you don't feel comfortable doing it, you want hammer fab to do it, Send us an email, info at hammerfab.com. We'll see what you got and see if we can fit you in our schedule. You can get the get the big back window kit and all the all the parts through us if you want. And uh, if you want more work than that done, we can do that too. That stuff kind of flows out real nice. I mean, when I first put it on, you can kind of tell it looks kind of bare. You think you might need to go over it again? First of all, it doesn't seem to like to stick to bare metal. It likes to stick to just a little bit of rust. Um, but then after you let it sit for a little while, it flows and it kind of just, it covers the whole thing. It's pretty nice. Okay, I think we are all done with that. Now we can just let it sit overnight and we'll be ready to put this inner panel in in the morning.